Hello and welcome to On the Shelves at ACPL. Today we are looking at romance novels. There are all types of romance novels, so I will have some descriptions as we go through uh, of which type of novel each one is, but let's get cracking. Our first novel is Someone to Remember by Mary Baylog. This is part of her Westcott series. In this book, our protagonist is an older lady, a spinster, and she has taken care of others all of her life and put love on the back burner. But then a gentleman who she had known 30 something years ago and had broken her heart 30 something years ago comes back into her life and he realizes what he missed and tries to convince her that it is not too late to find love. Our next book is The Happy Camper by Melody Carlson. This is a romantic comedy, a rom-com, what we're used to seeing in movie theaters. In this book, Dylan is gone, has gone back to help her aging grandfather. And, but when she gets back to help him, she finds that her mother has already beaten her to getting back and has taken over Dylan's old room. So Dylan uh, gets a gift of an old camper and decides to start fixing it up and is working with the local hardware store owner and sparks are flying. But then her ex-boyfriend, who always had trouble with commitment, shows up with flowers and a ring. So what will Dylan do? Our next book is The Country Guest House by Robin Carr. This is part of her Sullivan's Crossing series. In this book, Hannah finds herself the guardian of a little five-year-old boy named Noah. Uh, when her friend passes away. She decides that she and Noah need to get to know each other and she rents a guest house in Sullivan, Sullivan's Crossing. And the owner and his dog uh, inevitably become a part of her life and both she and Noah and the owner have to figure out how they fit into each other's lives and whether it is worth taking the chance uh, for, to fall in love. Our next book is Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne. Meg is a wonderful uh, handwriting person. She does the hand lettering that is so popular these days with beautiful uh, calligraphy. And she has a thriving business, creating invitations and all kinds of things for people. And she is asked to do the wedding programs for a young couple, meets them. And Meg also has an uncanny ability to see when people see insights into people's lives. And she looks at this couple and says, they are not going to make it. When she does their wedding program, she puts in a little hint basically saying that she doesn't think the wedding's going to make it and when the wedding does and when the marriage does not last more than a year the husband goes and hunts Meg down to figure out what she saw and how she knew this marriage was not going to last and of course she Meg falls in love with this young man and he falls in love with her but what obstacles will they have to face to find true love? Our next book is The Hearts We Burn by Brianna Cole. In this book, we have Kimora and her son. They have been kidnapped and imprisoned by an ex who is trying to ruin her life. She Kimara has an unlikely ally who she is very attracted to and she can't figure out if he is really going to help her and help her and her son escape 
or if he is playing his own game. Our next book is Before I Called You Mine by Nicole Deese. In this book, Lauren really wants to have a baby. Uh, this is her heart's desire and she is willing to give up the chance of finding love right now because the International Adoption Agency said that it is better if you are single to stay single uh, to show your commitment. Uh, and so she is going through the process of an international adoption. She is a teacher and a substitute teacher comes in and they instantly feel the sparks. But she doesn't know what to do. You know, does she follow her heart and start uh, you know, dating this young man or does she follow her heart and stay single for her adoption? So this is definitely a, an, a, a a tricky and, and hard question to answer because both paths uh, are going to lead her to happiness. And so what is she going to do? Our next book is A Mosaic of Wings by Kimberly Duffy. This is a book that falls somewhat into historical fiction and somewhat into romance. Our protagonist, Nora, has always had a dream of following in her father's footsteps and becoming an etymologist, studying animals, studying bugs, and especially loves butterflies. And she, after she graduates from Cornell, she gets a chance to go on an expedition to India. But when she gets there, she finds out that the men who are running this expedition expect her to stay in camp and draw the butterflies that the other men are finding rather than going out and doing the exploring herself. She also finds herself falling in love with Owen and trying to decide, you know, is this, is it worth giving up my dreams of becoming a leading entomologist to, uh, to, dis to follow love. Uh, so it also uh, goes into some of the history of, of India and the conditions of this time. Uh, she also befriends a young child who is dedicated to a goddess and is working in their camp. So lots of good historical information about India as well as a love story. Our next book is On a Coastal Breeze by Suzanne Woods Fisher. For Madison, uh, going to Three Sisters Island is a dream come true. She is newly licensed as a marriage therapist. And while there are no eligible men that she can find, they're all too old, too young, too crazy, uh, she is settling into her life and just loving it. And then Ricky drops in, literally on a parachute, landing on the dock. And Ricky, it turns out, was her nemesis all through grade school, all through high school. And she thought she had escaped him, but evidently not because he is now the pastor at the church on that island. So what will happen? Our next book is The Double Cross by Anna J. In this book, we have a young gentleman named Chase who finds it really easy to find someone to share his bed, but maybe not someone who can be his queen and share his life. And then he meets Sela and realizes that she might be the one, but then he messes up and he has to make the decision. Do I confess and hope that she forgives me or do I keep going and hope that she never finds out? Our next book is Not Quite Over You by Susan Mallory. It is part of the Happily Incorporated series. In this book, Drew sees that he has a second chance with Silver, whom he had been in love with years ago when they were in high school. And Silver isn't quite sure what she wants to do with this. Uh, she thinks that maybe if she can just sleep with Drew, 
it might get him out of her blood and she can move on uh, because her heart really was broken uh, by him. But she also has a secret that she did not share with him at the time. And you know now she has to decide, does she share her secret? Does she give him a chance? Our next story is Sisters by Choice, by, also by Susan Mallory. And in this story, we have three sisters who are all struggling in different ways uh, to figure out how to get out of the rut that their life has found them in and to pursue love in different ways. So can they support each other and find ways for each of the sisters to find their happiness? Our next book is Fearless by Fern Michaels. In this story, Anna meets Ryan on a cruise as she is re-entering the dating world. And he seems to be too good to be true. So they decide they're going to get their families together. And at first, everything seems to be going great. And Anna accepts Ryan's proposal of marriage. But then as the months pass, Anna starts to think that Ryan and his family may not be what they presented themselves to be. And she has to find strength within herself to figure out what's going on and to fight to keep her family safe and happy. Our next book is Country Strong by Linda Lael Miller. This is part of her country series. Uh, in this book, Cord is a true cowboy, loves horses, and then all of a sudden, a woman comes back in who is a spitting image of the girl who broke his heart years ago, and he wants to help her no matter what. Uh, Shaylee comes in to the ranch and has a chance to start a therapeutic writing school. And even though Cord was the man who broke her heart many, many years ago because he was in dating her best friend, uh, she wants to get this therapeutic writing school a chance and she wants to give Cord a chance. Could she be, could he be the one even though he was the one who got away? Our next book is The Tourist Attraction by Sarah Morgenthaler. Zoe is so excited because her bucket list was to go to Alaska. And here she is in Alaska and she's sitting in a sillyly named restaurant called The Tourist Trap. The trap is run by a man named Graham, who is a little bit on the grumpy side, but, you know, and he has a rule that no dating of the tourists, but he keeps looking over at this cute girl in the corner who blushes every time he looks. So this is definitely a romantic comedy, uh, something that is lighthearted and very enjoyable for the summer. Our next book is Unyielding Hope. It is by Jeanette Oakey, and it's part of her When Hope Calls series. This is a companion to the Hallmark series. In this book, Lillian has lost her parents and her younger sister to uh, tuberculosis when she was very young. She has now lived with her adoptive parents for many years, and her adoptive mother has now passed away. Her adoptive father has decided that he wants to go back to his native Wales. And so she is really at loose ends, not quite sure what she is going to do. But then a lawyer appears and says that not only has she inherited something from her birth parents, but her younger sister, who she thought had passed away from tuberculosis, in fact, went to a sanatorium and was cured. Lillian goes out to find Grace, her younger sister, and she's not quite sure if the two of them are going to be able to connect. Uh, but when she gets there, she finds out that Grace is full of life and full of plans. And Lillian has to decide if she is going to go along and see what happens if she uh, lets loose and has a wonderful 
time with her younger sister. Our next book is Forever Hidden by Tracy Peterson. Tracy is a, a religious romance writer. And in this book, Haven has been living with her sisters at her grandfather's uh, home in Alaska. She is realizing that their days of being happy at their grandfather's uh, homestead are going to end very soon because her grandfather is very ill. And she's trying to figure out how she's going to continue to support her younger sisters and how she can keep them all together. Meanwhile, a man named John shows up at her grandfather's house and he has promised his grandfather that he would deliver a box to uh, Haven's grandfather. And so he shows up and the two of them, Haven and John, uh, fall in love and are, but are still trying to figure out how they can go forward with the secrets that their families have been keeping. Our next book is Souls Survivor by Navi Robbins. This is also romantic suspense. Uh, in this book, Daniel finds himself uh, working with a lovely UN crisis counselor named Ayana. Uh, Daniel's wife and family were murdered uh, several years ago by an overlord in Africa. Ayani is trying to build a case against him, so the two of them are working together on this, and they're also trying to ignore the attraction between them. Uh, many obstacles are thrown in their way, especially when it comes to actually convicting this, uh, this warlord. And Ayana and Daniel realize they must defeat uh, this warlord at any cost. Our next book is The Good Fight by Danielle Steele. In this book, our protagonist, Meredith, wants to go to law school and continue the good fight. Uh, this book is set in the 1960s. Her, her parents do not want her to do this, especially her conservative father, but her grandfather, who eventually ends up on the Supreme Court, really supports Meredith's dreams to become a lawyer and to fight the good fight. This book involves a lot of history, uh, talking about the civil rights movement, talking about the assassinations, uh, there are many historical events that almost become a character uh, in this book. But if you are interested in that, in that time period, uh, this is a great book. Our next book is Moral Compass. It is also by Danielle Steele. In this book, we have a bunch of students who are starting their year at a prep school. The prep school has traditionally been an all boys school, but this year they have admitted 140 women. One of the students finds herself in a coma in the hospital because of a party with lots and lots of alcohol. The students, close ranks and aren't really sharing what happened. The parents are up at arms and outraged and trying to figure out uh, what really happened and are their children safe. And eventually students have to decide on their moral compass. Are they gonna protect their classmates or are they going to make sure that justice is served? Our next book is Spy by Danielle Steele. This book features Alexandra, who is rich and could live a life of leisure, but instead she decides to become a spy during World War II. The story goes from, uh, from this beginning of World War II uh, forward. It discusses all the different things that she does, 
her eventual husband and his involvement and how Alexandra can never really truly share everything because she it was and is a spy. Our next book is Hadley Beckett's Next Dish by Bethany Turner. This is another romantic comedy. Uh, in this story, we have Maxwell, who is a celebrity chef who has a bit of a temper and is definitely a, more of a grouchy person. But you also have Hadley, who also has a show on the same TV network, but she is more Southern charm and inviting everyone into her kitchen and being friendly. Well, Maxwell has a historic, horrible uh, meltdown on his show and his show is canceled. So his only way to get back into the television chef field is to work with Hadley on her show. And so, Sparks will fly, but so will knives. And it's fun to read about uh, two different people figuring out a way uh, towards each other. Our next book is Stay With Me by Becky Wade. This is another religious romance. Genevieve has built a successful career as a Bible teacher, inspirational leader, but then she gets a letter saying that she needs to come home to her family in the Blue Ridge Mountains because of a secret that might be revealed. So she goes back to do some damage control, but realizes that it's actually her secret that it might bring down uh, her very well-made facade. She meets Sam, who reluctantly rents her a cottage because her issues are a little too close to his own issues, and, but he does end up renting the cottage to her, and they start to work through some of their problems and may find uh, love with each other. Our last romance of the day is Ghosted by Rosie Walsh. Sarah and Eddie meet and fall in love. Instant, spend every moment of the, a week together. But then Eddie is getting ready to go on a long planned vacation. He says, I'll call you from the airport, but he never calls. And basically she is ghosted and she has no idea why. All of her friends say, forget him, move on, but Sarah just can't do it. And then she finds out why he ghosted her, and it's because they did not share everything from their past. And there is a past that they share, and that past might really affect their ability to be in love and to be in a relationship. So those are all of our romances for today. As usual, if you saw something you liked and you want to put it on hold, please go to our website, click on catalog, enter your information, and you can put it on hold yourself, or you can call any of our branches and we will put it on hold for you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of On the Shelves at ACPL, and we'll see you next time.